Hello everyone, welcome to Medi Cuisine. Today we are going to talk about a very important general medicine topic that is dementia. Dementia. By definition, it is the loss of memory with impairment of other cognitive functions sufficient to interfere with social or occupational functioning. So dementia is actually uh, comprised of two things. Loss of memory with impairment of cognitive functions like language, like visual special abilities, like attention, concentration. These are the cognitive functions which are lost, which are affected in dementia actually. The memory loss and cognitive impairment should be significant, like up to the mark, uh, such that it starts uh, interfering with the uh, daily life of the patient. So this is what we called dementia. Remember the consciousness level should remain intact in dementia and uh, by, by this we will differentiate dementia from delirium. What is delirium? Delirium is acute change in cognition and consciousness or sensorium. So the consciousness level should remain intact in dementia. And this is the consciousness level. This is actually the alertness which differentiates dementia from delirium. Delirium is an acute change. While dementia takes time like up to months and years uh, to develop. Now moving on to the causes of dementia. There are reversible causes and irreversible causes. The reversible causes include hypothyroidism, vitamin B12 deficiency and hepatic or uremic encephalopathy. Severe depression is also, uh, is also shown to cause dementia actually. But if you treat depression, the dementia will reverse. Sinus vasculitis. Several medications are shown to cause dementia like the anticholinergics. So these are some of the reversible causes of dementia. The irreversible causes of dementia include the Alzheimer's disease which accounts for about 60 to 80 percent of cases. Dementia with Levy bodies, the second most common cause of dementia we will discuss later in this video. The frontotemporal dementia like PAC disease, the vascular dementia, multi-infarct dementia, the Benswinger syndrome, the creutzfeldt jakob disease, the Parkinsonian dementia, the normal pressure hydrocephalus. So I forget that one. So let write it. The normal pressure hydrocephalus. This is also a cause of dementia. In this video, we will explain in details all the irreversible causes of dementia like Alzheimer's disease, dementia with Levy bodies and all the others because these are the things that are important uh, because the reversible causes when they are actually treatable they are actually treatable when you treat the cause the dementia actually gets reversed so the significant causes are the irreversible causes which we will discuss in details later in this video now let's talk about the clinical presentation of dementia the clinical presentation depends on the specific cause of dementia because in different diseases specific domains of cognition are affected or some domains are affected earlier in the course of disease and some are affected in the later stages of the disease. Remember that dementia is also accompanied by the specific features of the disease like we see in Parkinson's disease and dementia with Levy bodies. The dementia is actually accompanied by the motor symptoms of the diseases like postural instability, the gait disturbances, the bradykinesia. So the dementia is accompanied by the specific features of the disease. Now let's talk about the different irreversible causes of dementia one by one and details and study their clinical presentation which is actually cognitive impairment along with the other specific uh, other specific clinical features of the different diseases. The first irreversible cause we are going to talk about is Alzheimer's disease. 
Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia accounting for uh, about 60 to 80 percent of all cases of dementia. In Alzheimer's disease, the patients typically present with memory problems and problems of visual special abilities that occur early in the course of the disease. So memory problems and visual special problems, they are the typical they are the typical uh, the, they are the typical domains of cognitions that are affected in the Alzheimer's disease. What is mean by visual special ability? So visual special ability is a separate domain of cognition which is actually a skill for understanding and working with visual information and special relationships between objects. It is like your brain's talent for looking at things, understanding where they are and figuring out how they fit together. Uh, the examples of visual special abilities is like on drawing, uh, is like crossing a busy road where you assess the speed and uh, where you assess the speed of incoming vehicles towards you. You figure out the uh, spaces among the cars and vehicles on the roads to cross the road even. So buttoning shots this is also a visual special ability. So memory problem and visual special ability, these are the two domains of cognitions that are typically affected in Alzheimer's disease and the early course of the disease. And the personality changes occur late in the course of the disease actually. This is in contradiction to frontotemporal dementias like Peck disease where the personality changes are the typical one where the personality changes occur in the uh, early disease actually. In Alzheimer's disease, the social graces like interaction with your surrounding people, with the society, they are retained. There are several risk factors for Alzheimer's disease in which age is the most significant one. So age is the most significant risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Several genetic factors, lifestyle factors and environmental factors combined to actually cause the Alzheimer's disease. There is no single diagnostic test available uh, for Alzheimer's disease and the diagnosis is a clinical one. Now let's talk about dementia with Levy bodies which is the DLB. It is regarded the second most common cause of dementia after Alzheimer's disease. In dementia with Levy bodies, there is fluctuating cognitive impairment plus confusion and alertness. Fluctuating cognitive impairment means sometimes the symptoms get better. The symptoms get better and then the symptoms worsen and the disease progresses. Along with the cognitive impairment, there is confusion and decreased alertness. So the change in sensorium, due to the change in sensorium, uh, it may be confused with delirium because in delirium there is also cognitive impairment and change in sensorium like alertness. The specific domains of cognition that are affected in DLB are the attention, concentration, executive functions. These are the domains of uh, cognition that are typically affected uh, in the early in the early stages of the disease. Uh, patients of DLB can have behavioral disturbances as well. By the way, what was the other disease which we have studied uh, in which there are motor symptoms and behavioral disturbances as well. If you are thinking about Huntington disease, you are right. In Huntington disease, there are motor symptoms along with behavioral disturbances. In dementia with Levy bodies, there are also motor symptoms with and they can be accompanied by behavioral disturbances. So it was just for fun. So the patients can have motor symptoms similar to those of Parkinson's disease and when they have motor symptoms, it becomes very difficult, very challenging for the doctors to differentiate it from the Parkinsonian dementia. Uh, you know, dementia also occurs uh, in Parkinson disease, which is called Parkinsonian dementia. So how will you differentiate dementia with Levy body from Parkinsonian dementia? 
in Parkinsonian dementia, the onset of dementia should be preceded by well-established Parkinson disease or the motor symptoms of Parkinson disease for at least one year. What this mean? It means that if a patient has Parkinson disease for one year, two year, three year, at least there should be one year. So if a patient has Parkinson disease for one year, after one year, after two years, he or she then develops uh, dementia, cognitive impairment. So this dementia will come under the uh, Parkinsonian dementia. So this dementia will be considered as Parkinsonian dementia. There should be one year difference between the onset of Parkinson disease and the onset of dementia actually. While dementia occurring first or within one year of within one year of onset of motor symptoms will be considered as dementia with the Levy bodies. Like if a patient develops dementia and after some time the patient develops motor symptoms similar to those of Parkinson's disease or if a patient develops Parkinson's disease like symptoms similar to those of Parkinson's disease and within one year of onset of these symptoms the patient develops dementia this dementia will be considered as dementia with the Levy bodies so there should be at least one year difference between the onset of motor symptoms and the onset of dementia then the dementia will be considered as Parkinsonian dementia otherwise the dementia will be considered as dementia with the Levy bodies the third irreversible cause of dementia we will talk about is pec disease the patient typically present with personality changes as we said earlier in this video the frontotemporal dementias uh, like pec disease they typically present with personality changes early in the course of the disease because uh, the frontotemporal dementia uh, there is degenerative changes in the frontal changes and the frontal lobes actually the frontal lobes you know they are associated with personality of the of the of the individual so the personality changes are the typical one for frontotemporal dementia like pec disease there is a relative sparing of the visual special abilities social and emotional abnormalities precedes the memory impairment so the memory impairment is not a, a classical symptom of pec disease the memory impair the memory impairment occurs actually but in the later stages of the disease the frontotemporal dementia is primarily noted by the family members because the patient has no insight to it the patient is not aware of it it means that normally dementia patients are aware of their situation this is uh, the typical uh, feature of dementia that the patients are aware majority of the patients are aware to some extent of their situation but in 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 pec disease the in pec disease uh, are any frontotemporal dementia the patient is not aware of the situation not aware of himself or herself actually the family members uh, realize that the that the that the patient has uh, has got some problem so the family members they are the first who note the, the the situation of the patient the fourth irreversible cause of dementia we will talk about is cjd creutzfeldt jakob disease remember dementia secondary to cjd is classical shorter and aggressive course like in other irreversible causes like alzheimer disease like dlb the pec disease the dementia actually takes years to develop so it is more chronic course while in cgd the dementia takes the 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 dementia takes months and even weeks to develop the memory problems the cognitive impairment this actually takes weeks and months to develop so if a patient presents to you with much shorter course of uh, memory problem and cognitive impairment you should suspect cgd and cgd the dementia is accompanied by the typical myoclonus 
so in scenarios and examinations they describe cgd with dementia with myoclonus and dementia myoclonus may be accompanied by ataxia also so the diagnosis of cgd is established by the presence of 1433 protein and the csf and the csf analysis actually eliminate the need from the need for brain biopsy to diagnose cgd the fifth irreversible cause we will talk about is normal pressure hydrocephalus nph the patient presents typically with prominent gait abnormalities which precede the onset of cognitive impairment so there will be gait abnormalities which will be followed by the onset of cognitive impairment like the memory problems the different domains of cognition will be affected and in nph the dementia will be accompanied by urinary incontinence remember in cjd the dementia will be accompanied by myoclonus and the dementia when they describe dementia they will give weeks and months and and the last we will talk about the vascular dementia and this is i think the sixth number a reversible cause so vascular dementia you know the risk factors for vascular dementia they are the same as those for coronary artery disease like like diabetes like hypertension like hyperlipidemia these are the risk factors for coronary artery disease and cerebral artery diseases so these risk factors are also for the vascular dementia they also increase the risk for vascular dementia now let's talk about the two types of vascular dementia one is multi infarct dementia and one is benswanger syndrome also called subcortical vascular dementia multi infarct dementia is a common cause of dementia in older age and multi infarct dementia is classically due to multiple strokes which causes the brain tissue to damage as you know some strokes may occur without noticeable symptoms which are called silent strokes so the patient suffer from multiple strokes multiple silent strokes which actually damage the brain tissue extensively but this damage is classically at the cortical level and multi infarct dementia the damage is at cortical level this actually differentiates multi infarct dementia from benswanger syndrome where there is damage to brain tissue but at subcortical level so sub it is called subcortical vascular dementia due to extensive microscopic damage to the small blood vessels and nerve fibers below the cortex actually now we are into the diagnosis of dementia all patients presenting with memory problems and cognitive impairment should be assessed with mini mental status exam to actually identify the areas of cognitive impairment the workup should be started to exclude the reversible causes first like the hypothyroidism vitamin b12 deficiency the depression the encephalopathy you have to do cbc you have to do um, lfts or fts to exclude the uremic encephalopathy and hepatic encephalopathy you you have to do the thyroid function tests and all the baseline investigations to exclude all the reversible causes first brain imaging can be useful especially in those who have seizures gait abnormalities acute or subacute onset of symptoms and eeg and csf may be useful and nph and cjd where we look for 1433 proteins and csf now let's talk about the treatment of dementia first of all if you find a reversible cause of dementia treated the dementia will get reversed now in the treatment section the most important treatment is that of alzheimer disease so we will talk about uh, we will talk briefly about the treatment of alzheimer disease in this section you know in the treatment of alzheimer disease 
the acetyl acetylcholine has got importance and it has been shown that raising the level of acetylcholine in the central nervous system benefits the patient so we use different acetylcholinesterase inhibitors like donipezil rivastigmine galantamine which actually raise the level of acetylcholine in the central nervous system and these drugs have been shown to improve to improve the cognitive functions another drug is being used in the treatment of alzheimer disease this is memantine and this is thought to be a disease modifying drug used in advanced stages of the disease either alone or with cholinesterase inhibitor it seems to be neuroprotective so so the acetyl cholinesterase inhibitors which are being used in the treatment of alzheimer disease they are not neuroprotective they are only for the symptomatic relief while memantine is been shown to be neuroprotective which reduces the risk of progression of the disease so this was something about dementia we talked about the definition of dementia how we will actually differentiate dementia from delirium we talked about the different causes of uh, dementia the reversible causes the irreversible causes then we talked about the clinical presentation in which we discussed the different irreversible causes of dementia in details and then we talked about the diagnosis of dementia how we actually diagnose dementia and in the last we talked about the treatment of alzheimer disease you know the treatment is all about treating the cause of dementia treating the cause of dementia if a reversible cause is found treat that if a reversible cause is treatable treat it also so this concludes our today's topic thank you for watching